You're listening to Tabletop Arcanum, a podcast dedicated to learning and exploring the hobby of tabletop gaming. Your hosts are Justin Taylor and Richard Geese, so sit back and relax as we talk, discuss, and joke our way through the hobby we love so much. Piratry, misadventure, and a world of magic. Ahoy me, mateys. From the minds that brought you Dead of Winter comes a thrilling new game for the sea dog and all of us. Forgotten Waters, a crossroads game. Plunges players into the lives of the pirates aboard the finest ships ever to sail the seas. Okay, it ain't the finest ship. Not even the close. But it's certainly not the worst. Play through exciting app-assisted scenarios and laugh as you and your friends decide if you want to save the world or bonk it on the head and steal its money. Each game of Forgotten Waters is a fantastic new misadventure filled with the discovery of exotic new lands. Players will plunder loot, bury treasures in places they'll never see again, and participate in a kind of violent shenanigans their mothers never approved of. Uncover a massive world full of content you'll return to over and over again. Explore a variety of standalone scenarios, each led by its own larger-than-life pirate captain whose ambitions may undo you all develop your own pirate from their backstory right up to their explosive ignorable final face howering crossroads events that will help reshape the course of your game welcome to tabletop arcanum this is justin and mindy and welcome to our next episode this time featuring forgotten waters a new crossroads game from plat hat games and isaac vega one of the many games that we played over this past week, two weeks, technically, yeah. a few different times. Pretty sure that's about the only games I've played. So, Justin, what have you played this last couple of weeks? Um, aside from this, uh, Twilight Imperium, Robinson Caruso, Nemesis, Sentinels of the Multiverse, Spirit Island, Marvel Champions, More Forgotten Waters. I don't think I've played Arkham in two weeks, though. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. I think I'm just playing other games for, okay. for now. But, yeah, it's I've been keeping busy, too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but that's uh, a couple different D&Ds. Um, prepping for what will be our next episode, which is the uh, upcoming Stargate RPG using the Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition system uh, put on by Wyvern Games. So doing that too but that's more of like hey talk about that at the end of the show Mm -hmm. um so in the meantime let's talk about forgotten waters yes and this new kind of crossroads gem the crossroads game series isn't one franchise it started with dead of winter Mm -hmm. and dead winter had a spinoff and then they had well not really the dead of winter started with dead of winter then they came out with a second game, The Long Night, which was a not a second edition, but like an alternate version. You can get one or the other, or you can smash them together to get all, all, all the options. And then there was Warring Colonies, where you can put up a bunch of people together. And then they made Raxon, which was a spin-off game. So like Dead of Winter became like this big, right. massive hit. Right. But the core mechanic of the crossroads, which was like this deck of cards that as you're taking your turn, another player has your crossroads card and is looking for a trigger if you did something specific in your turn. Right. This random narrative event would happen. Yes. So at the core, that's the that's the crossroads mechanic, is like this narrative driven usually like an A or B choice of mm-hmm. something's gonna happen. Sometimes it's a group vote. Right. Um Gen 7 was the next one that came out at, uh, last year, and that was a big game um, of space, and it was a little bit more campaign-y because you played like, multiple sessions chained to each other, but you're still doing the Crossroads events of, did you, if uh, that one was triggered off of if you played your officer in a specific spot, then you might get a Crossroads event with that. So... Forgotten Waters kind of continues that in, in a narrative way, but they changed the mechanic up again because now you're running an app or a, it's actually a website, not really an app, so anything smartphone, tablet, whatever can access the internet can get to it. Mm-hmm. 
and you're punching in location numbers, and those location numbers in Forgotten Waters will potentially trigger those crossroads events for you. Okay. So, still very narrative. Yes. Um, this time now, pirate themed. Yes. So we went from zombies to space to pirates. So, for starters, I'm not a fan of Dead of Winter. No. I just, I'm not a fan of zombies, it's for the one theme, thing. It's not the mechanics. Yeah. It, yeah, definitely the theme. Some of the mechanics were kind of... They were okay, but they weren't, like, wouldn't mm-hmm. be my go-to. But yeah, zombies is not my thing. So I definitely enjoy this much better being pirates. Mm-hmm. Um, one more. Um, Did you get to play in Gen 7 yet? No, I don't think so. Okay. I can't remember. I don't know. I don't think so. I think I barely played Raxon. Well, that's, again, zombie theme. So yeah. I, yeah, I, I don't know. expect you to... <laughs> <laughs> actually have played that one. Yeah, no. I know. So, um, Isaac Vega is the designer on this one. Um, the box has three to seven players. It does. There is actually, if you go onto the website, fwcrossroads.com, which is what you're going to run the app, uh, the whole game off of, plus the components of the box, there's actually variant or there's variant rules for solo and two-player play yes. uh, within there. So, it's a little deceiving. The box says three to seven, and that's just the rules inside the box and the way the game's intended to play is three to seven. You can play two or one player. Mm-hmm. The rules change up quite a bit in the sense of if you're playing solo, you're essentially playing for four players. Right. And if you're two players, you're essentially each playing three. So right. you're playing like, like a six player game. Yeah. I so can... it takes a little getting used to. It's different. I like the fact that it's included. Yes. I just wish there was a rule sheet a printable... in the actual rule book. Because the rule book um, is eight pages front to back. Yeah. So and, and some of it's naming your pirate. So <laughs> One of those pages is a pirate name generator and the credits. Yes. Not, not bad stuff to include. Mm-hmm. Uh, two pages is literally all the component pages, so adding one to two more pages to this with the variant rules included yeah, would, or, have been, would have been beneficial. Or just the ability to print out those rules, um, which... Yeah. Yeah. Either way, um, they say 14 plus on the box uh, as far as age, and I would probably say that is a little bit more accurate. There's a lot of technical reading. Um, navigating the, the website, navigating your actions. A little more adult context, too. And, yeah, there's, there's some... I Being was... piratey. They're not terrible. They're not... Dead of Winter included marks on some of the Crossroads cards to, to take out the profanity or take out the um, suggestive themes mm-hmm. of, of a survival horror game. This one doesn't. And it's not necessarily profanity as much, but it's like some of the suggestive themes. You're not, but I mean, like in this you one you can't. Bar. I know you can't necessarily take out a bar scene because it's you, an activity. So you could adjust it in the app if they actually had like a parental settings in the app to filter out some of those events. You could, or but... at least edit the events to be mm-hmm. more family friendly. So there's, I can see there could be potential ways of doing it. It's just not there. No, but that's also not like graphic detail or anything no. like that for it's you know, actually it's a little tongue, tongue in cheek and silly yeah to be honest yeah um so the whole theme is very much a, a pirate theme very army matey very like stereotypical pirate not historical pirate right even though my uh my my love note from the customer service team did say it was 100 percent historically accurate so i'm inclined to believe them of course um it's fun, it's colorful, it's, it's vibrant. It is. It is a game. Um, coming off of Santa Monica from the last episode, which was colorful but very, like, pastel and very, mm-hmm. like, balanced. Right. This is, like, high saturation, in-your-face, almost neon colors, flashing techno light show colors. Yeah. And not so, only, like, the box, but the pieces inside, the book. Everything. Everything is just color and... Just and, depth and deep to, color, like and detail, you mm-hmm. know. And even though like it's 
playful some of these pictures and stuff like that but there's still a lot of detail in it you know yeah. like we'd be looking at something and be like oh there's the um turtle hugging the the bottle you right. know like yeah the yeah uh, the location yeah we'll, we'll we'll touch on that yeah but um the one thing i do also want to point out is it does say two to four hours for a scenario mm-hmm. now the games we've played the only time i've hit the Two hour mark is a solo game with myself. Okay. We hit four hours. a four hour mark with a two player game. And the sample uh, games that we played with more players was actually more like six. Yes. Almost seven. seven. Yeah. Um, so much so that we actually broke up and came back okay. at it. Yeah. Um, now, each scenario, there's five of them in that come in the box. Each scenario essentially has a part one, part two, and there's a way to save the game. Essentially, on your ship log, you can flip it over, and then there's like you can, you can take it. you can take all your notes and kind mm-hmm. of save state and pick up the game very yeah. naturally in there. And every time we've played the two hour mark, three hour mark is where we hit the end of part, part one. one. Yeah. So the two to four hour range, I think, is accurate for a part, a part, but maybe especially in those higher five, six, seven player count games, mm-hmm. may not be a realistic number. Right. Until you get a groove amongst the table and then you might hit it right but it's going to take some some time for that yeah definitely Um, random events also kind of play into that because if you're in a ship battle and you decide to board the ship instead of just get away from it that's just going to add to your time right and that's i mean that's any type of thing that you do Mm -hmm. um the one thing to know is yes we played you played by yourself we Mm -hmm. played the two-person version Mm -hmm which we lost. Um, yeah. We have not won every game. No. But we did play the higher count, four and seven person mm-hmm. games. Um, however, because we are still in quarantine, we did not pay play um, with the actual box and stuff, so we did play it online. Yeah. Um, so there, that definitely included some of our extra time, I think. Yes. Because Noted, I hit two hours solo play. You, We hit four hours dual four. play. Four, yeah. So, and that was with the physical game. Game, hmm So I think it's possible. I think the medium we were using was not helpful. No. But it allowed us to play and actually test the game at those higher player counts, so I was really happy to at least try it. Right. And see how it played with higher player counts. Yeah. Um, neat thing is, there are, uh, like I said, five scenarios in the box. Each scenario is really unique and independent of each other. Now, there is a overarching story to so like the later scenarios we played reference some of the events of the other scenarios. Mm-hmm. So you kind of want to play them in order. It's not necessary. But it's not necessary. You're right, and that's mm-hmm. that's what I appreciate of it. Mm-hmm. Now, two of the four are audio right. enabled and narrative. So Plaid Hat has been they're slowly working on it. Um, when the game first got into my hands, only one scenario was uh, had audio attached to it. Um, and then within a week, the next one did. I'm hoping in the next month yeah. or two, the rest of them will get that mm-hmm. uh, narrative support. And it's really nice because... It will help so instead of one person reading or... They, the, the theme gets stronger. True, cause because you've got they do the, the voice. They've got the voice acting and things like that nature, which is... And some of the inflections that they chose would not have been how I read right. some of it. So, like, I really enjoy it for that. Mm-hmm. Um, now, we played the scenarios that didn't have it, and I didn't feel like it missed anything. It was just us reading no, it. And yeah. So, and, you know, good to, touch, not critical. <laughs> you have to put up with my terrible reading, so. <laughs> um, and then the only other thing is, I cr- other than Beyond the Ocean's Edge, which is scenario one in the book, you would suggest start with this one, which seems to be the most simplistic like mechanics mm-hmm. of like here go to point B or go to A go to B, B and go, go back to, to C, A and like, right. like very clear instructions all the scenarios that we tested were very clear of what the objective was right because you have objective cards and that's the nice thing is mm-hmm. like it is very much like this is what you're trying to do you're just not too sure um some of the later ones are a little bit more loose, like, hey, right. you're trying to do this, opposed to go to here. Right. Which makes sense, because your first one, you want to make sure that you're mm-hmm. 
being pushed in the right direction. We didn't know what we were trying to do, though. True. It was just more of like, okay, what do we need? Like, we know what we need to do, but how are we going to pull it off, and what's going to be the better choice? Right. Um, because that's the thing we encounter is we had choices of locations to go to potentially. Right. Now, all that being said, the does support up to seven players. Each player gets uh, a background pirate sheet. Yes. There's a bunch of them in the box. You can download Tw- spare copies. Twenty one options to choose from. And they're all unique. Yes. And they all have different stat yes. blocks that you fill in. They all have different constellations that you fill in. And they all have different backstories. Stories. Yeah. It's a Mad Lib style backstory. Yes. So you fill in some blanks and then you read it out to everybody. And that's what added to our time online. Seven players reading yes. seven backstories. So I know that doesn't help. Right. But it was a lot of fun. And just setting the, those characters in general yeah. to get your, your Mad Lib story in there. Yeah. You know. And then within there, so now everybody's got their pirate. Now everybody has to get a job. So there's a lot of things in the game that you track for the ship. Mm-hmm. There and, are seven. And there's seven different jobs. So, right. like, one job is the scribe, who is taking the ship's log, writes down, like, the right. the app will t- or the website tell will tell you. you, like, hey, make sure you know this, cross this off. Um, there's captain's quarters, captain's mission, and... Um, threat. Threat reads events. And... and there's, like, a checklist, like, okay, this is the next one we get to read. Right. So that's kind of, they're just kind of a tracker. Right. Um, Quartermaster tracks the infamy rating of all the pirates on the crew, and that's kind of a who's the most infamous, and you kind of jump, leapfrog over each other and swap mm-hmm. spots. I feel like that's the most active. active one. Yes. Yeah. Hands down, that is the most active one. But that kind of traits uh, tie-breaking. That right. also... Order of action assignment is also done by an infamy. So those are like two really important things that are tied to it. Right. And then sometimes you'll get like, okay, the most infamous pirate has to make this choice, or the least infamous pirate has to make that choice. Mm. Um, there's the first mate who keeps track of your current crew and the current discontent of the crew. Yep. The game, uh, you lose the game if those two meet. meet. So one goes up the track, one goes down the track. Yeah, don't let them meet. Um... The bosun um, tra- keeps track of the sink, the ship's hull. Uh-huh. If that hits zero, you sink. You, you lose. Yep. Um, and the cooper keeps track of the ship's supplies. Right. Which you can go to zero and not lose. Right. But this is how you feed the crew. This is how you get stuff in the port. It's how you um, load things. Your cannons. There's a lot of like everything. There's a lot of stuff yeah. that that supply track is going up and down all the time. Yeah. Uh, speaking of cannons, the gunner keeps control of the cannons as yep. well as. The event dial. So if you're attacking another ship, to track its hull or sails or whatever event you're doing, or maybe it's a sea monster or a shark or whatever. Right. Those the, the gunners are kind of in charge of those stat lines. Yeah. Um, and then finally, the lookout keeps track of your current threat as well as the current objective. So the lookout and the ship's grab are probably the least engaging two mm-hmm. roles. Everyone else is at least doing something. Uh, gunner probably on the lower end. Right. Um, but like we said, the, the quartermaster are the most critical and mm-hmm. like always doing something because that infamy track is going up and down all the time. And then it's kind of like the first mate and Cooper um, are kind of like the next more, like their tracks move a lot. Mm-hmm. And the bosun kind of moves around a little bit. Then the gunner kind of does their thing. Yeah. So. And it's, I mean, the gunner is going to be a little bit more heavy during battles and stuff like that. So, you right. know, that's just. City and port, they're not going to really have a job right. to work with. Yeah. But I like the idea that everybody has something to do mm-hmm. in addition to their actions. So you're kind of always having to pay attention to the game, right. even if it's not your current action that you're taking, because maybe I'm in charge, of, I'm the Cooper, I'm in charge of supplies, and you're doing something, and I have to make sure I adjust my track. Right. Well, and then and then if you're playing with less than seven, you know, you've got more than one job. Right. So and that's what I appreciate. Some of them are less engaging it, than others, yes. so that you can go, oh, well, the ship scribe isn't really something that happens all the time, so maybe the person who's the quartermaster would take the ship scribe. Right. Um, okay. Now, now let's talk about the other thing. Now, Plant Hat has done, like, games like Stuffed Fables, mm-hmm. um, uh Quirky Circuits, who uses the storybook board scenario yeah and this is a crossroads game 
but also a storybook style game too. Yes. So you have a location book, and that's where the core mechanic of the game comes into play. And I kind of love it for this because the first thing is you it'll tell you like, oh, you're going to go to page three. Right. As soon as you open page three, you start a counter on the app, and everybody in infamy order has to place on the actions. Right. On that page. So you kind of, you can, you, you have the about enough time to read what the locations are, see the icons on locations, but you're not really supposed to read exactly what you're doing in those locations, and you don't have, really have the time. Right. It's supposed to be a quick pick. Yeah. Here you go. Like, oh, I want to go and do this. Right. This sounds like something I want to do. I want to go to the market. I want to bury treasure. I want to... I want to, yeah. I'm going to load the cannons. Right. Like, I'm going to go to the okay, bar. Cool. Whatever. Like, that's the thing that you're trying to do. Mm-hmm. So, there's a little bit of a scramble on that, yes. because if you run out of time, um, you, you, the discontent starts coming up. And yeah. again, if the discontent crew beat, you lose. So, right. there's a little bit of urgency there. And sometimes you may repeat a page, too. Like mm-hmm. If you're in port, you may... Do it, go you to might, the market you, again. You might, you might do yeah. it a second time around. And Which then, is okay. Then you kind of have a little more, like, oh, I don't want anything to do next right. time. Right. Um, and I noticed as we played more, like, as soon as we started, some of the same pages would come up again. Mm-hmm. We had a good concept of what we need to do. Right. Which helped. Yeah. Um, and then again, it's all app-based, and so it's really nice. Um, there's a bunch of different skills that you can roll on your pirate sheet, mm-hmm. and your start actions will tell you, you to gain them, and essentially it's a D12 roll plus any sort of bonuses you have, whether it's the skill itself or any treasure cards that give you bonuses to it. Right. So, and then the action chart itself will say, oh, did you get a 1 to 4, 5 to 8, 9 to 11, 12 to 15, 16 or higher? Right. Like, and then it'll tell there. you what happens. So, yeah. usually the more the better. But. Yeah, and then once you start getting into the game more and with the people you're with, I mean, you're all working together, so you end mm-hmm. up figuring out who's got higher traits on certain things to make sure that you, right. you know, you get going, like At one navigation. Game, hunting, you were really, you right. had the right items and you had a good skill, like, right. you so just became a hunter because right. you could hit the high numbers almost every time. Right, so we could get the supply we needed. Now, Granted. Right, and that means I can't do other things, but... Right, you can't do other things, and on your little pirate backstory, as you're filling up your skills, certain skills are capped. Right. Like you can only go so high because that's the type of pirate you are. So if you happen to be the all-seeing pirate, you can only get two levels of swagger, because right. that's their cap. But you can get up to seven levels of aim instead. Right. So each one, and they're very balanced. They are. The other thing is you have this constellation that you're working towards, and that's your personal goal. So everyone's working together to beat the scenario, but you have a personal goal, and I like right. that. That's a, your type of ending to the story. Right. Because so. you have a backstory, you kind of know what's going on, and you're trying to discover something about yourself, and then there's explanation marks. If you fill out your, your skills and you hit a star in the box, you get to draw a point on your constellation. The more points you get, the closer you get to those explanation parks, and then you start doing um, what they call constellation events. And those constellation events will give you usually a little bit more story fluff of what's going on with you. So, and then there's some like, game mechanics, like you may gain a treasure, you may steal someone else's treasure, you may right. um, discontent, you might get food. Like, right. stuff will happen. But the whole point is by the end of the scenario, if you have three or less, you get what is known as a bad ending, which is usually your story is not so great. No. Um, if you get four, you get a good ending, which is usually like, well, okay, not bad. You, yeah. you, you're searching for your, your lost family, and you found them. Right. And But if you get all five, you get what they're going to call as a legendary ending, which then it's kind of like the over-the-top like Jack Sparrow level right. ending. I love it all. Mm-hmm. If, if you can't tell from my I can my tell. Website. Yes. Um, my point when we first played this game, I like I fell in love with it too. I'm like, oh, this is just cool all over. I think we've hit a lot of the explanation and kind of some of the ups and downs. Let's talk about first impressions of the game instead. Mm-hmm. Like when you get the box, open the box. You talked about the the colorfulness of it. Yes. Well, because I am the colorfulness person. Yes. But yes, it's very vivid. It's very bright, and it's a uh, it's a good contrast and. Um, 
a good picture of, you know, like the front is just pirate themed and like all these kind of little things here and there, you know. Ships, ships treasures, uh, parrot, uh, shark. Yeah, it's a shark. Some of the pirates that you play as are, are shown on it. Mm hmm. Yeah, so the, like that's all good and like it's got a lot of detail without being overly crowded, which is nice. Um, Surprisingly so. so. Like, yeah. Like, how much is crammed into these pages? There's. It doesn't, none of it really feels like, oh my god, there's so much to pay attention to. Right. Um, actually, in the box, I mean, I mean, your sides have pirates and stuff too, which is always kind of nice. But mm -hmm. actually, in the box, like, everything's got that little bit of pirate theme, which is nice. You know, you got your, um, your old scroll looking type items for mm -hmm. your, like, your lookouts and your, like, your plaques and stuff. Um, the one thing, the the box comes with like the little ship log type thing, which is nice, and the and the ship log is the same throughout no right what scenario you're doing. But what's neat is like it's mission little... one or captain's mission will say enter. Um, you enter the same it? numbers. You and enter the they same numbers. Give you different things. On the scenario it links differently inside, so it, mm -hmm. it's smart in right. that sense. Um. um but, you know, like, you get that, and, like, on the back, it's got, like, where you can record to, you know, when you need to take a break or whatever and start over. Um, the one thing is, you know, they're, like, little half pages, which is nice, but the pirate sheets, mm -hmm. um, I get it. They, you know, they're double-sided. They're kind of half sheets, but you only get a stack of one of them. One of each of them. One of now, each of them. there's a lot of them. There are. There's 21 of them, but obviously, like... You want to play it multiple times if, you know, obviously you have to go online and you have to print those out, yeah. which I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I definitely get it, but, um, I don't know. <laughs> um, uh, the only thing I would have is it's, there's a pro and con to it. So if they gave you like two copies of everyone, then you really have to make sure no one's playing the duplicate because that's one of the restrictions is you can't both be the all-seeing pirate. Right. Everyone has to be unique. So if you get one of everything, you're always going to be unique right? in that sense. But, but And they do give the option of PDFs online. Um, the webpage gives you the link to it, so you can get that for and more ships log if you play it a lot. Right. So the benefit is there. I see both sides of this. Right. And it's not like we're not in the age of copying things, really. So it's not like, right. you know, not everybody has a copier, not everybody has a printer. Like, that's kind of one of those few things, like, mm -hmm. I mean, you can have internet connection and not have a printer, so, right. you know. <laughs> um, that's very true. Yeah. But, I mean, overall, I like, the pieces are, I mean, they're not, like, the board in general, the biggest part is going to be your book. Yep. Because it's a book, and it's, you know, a square mm -hmm. board that you basically open to a rectangle. Okay, so the, the pages are actually pre- Pretty thick. They're pretty heavy paperweight. They're not full cardstock other than the outside. I would probably prefer full cardstock. Uh, one made a little bit heavier and more probably more expensive, but mm -hmm. um, a little bit sturdier page turning. Yeah. Now, benefit is you're not actively flipping pages like constantly all the time. Yeah. It's like find the right page in the corner and then like, all, right, all right, ready, go, flip open. Right. Um. And you know, one side is. A picture where the other mm -hmm. side's text. So, right. um, I will say this has been a step up from Gen Seven. You, know, you didn't get to play with that one, but the storybook in that one was a little more flimsy. Mm -hmm. This is closer to the storybooks that stuff fables and quirky circuits. So, I think the durability is there. I mm -hmm. just I would have liked a little bit thicker pages. Right. Um, if the outer pages were also everything on the inside, I think I would have been happy. But it's a minor complaint mm -hmm. in that sense. Um, and I know there's a cost versus right. factor there. Um, all the tokens, all the cardboard is actually pretty heavy, thick stock. Mm -hmm. um, all the player boards that you do your jobs on are wooden planks. Yeah. Um, so it has this huge theme going through it. Um, they actually give you all seven dice for each of the pirate colors mm -hmm. that you get to play as, so, like, even that's great. Right. Um, 
Yeah, I like the I like the little little boards for the other jobs yeah. so that you're not looking at one board and you're all trying to navigate that one to apart. work. Yeah. yeah, so you can sit around a table and you can each do your own thing. Um, and a small tweak that I do enjoy, let's say you only have, if you're doing two jobs, the two boards actually are cut so you can put them against each other and they'll, they'll, they match. Mm. So they can slide into each other, So they, they slot kind of into each other in such a way where, yeah, if I'm doing two jobs, I can put them right up against each other. Mm-hmm. And no big deal. But they are broken apart. To be moved to around out. the table, yeah. Or if your table side, you know, it's this is a nice. It takes up a lot of space, mm-hmm. but it's very malleable how you can use, use that space. space. Right, because so you're not doing a whole lot of stuff in front of you either. The biggest thing you need is um, like a twelve by twelve uh, for the world map of where mm-hmm. your ship is, and then the book is a twelve by twelve that you open up flat. So right, twenty four by twelve. Oh, right, that's the minimum size. It definitely needs to be free. Right. Everything else is kind of loose, mm. which is nice. I was actually a little surprised because the first time we played, we played online, mm-hmm. of just how tiny these treasure cards are. Yep. Um, which is not a terrible thing because definitely... Yeah, that's the mini American size, so... Yeah. So that and the story cards, they're a little smaller. Mm-hmm. It's Like I said, it's not a bad thing, and they're just... They were smaller than I thought they would be, so... Um, but yeah, I mean... Yeah. I think the the overall to it is good. I think, um, you know, it it fits nicely. It seems to fit nicely in the box. Um, it has a lot of like what Dead of Winter has. There's a lot of space in the box mm-hmm. for you to kind of rearrange or do things as you need. So I appreciate it for that. Um, they also give you a lot of bags mm-hmm. in it, so like you can kind of sort bag it yourself and take care of it yourself. Not a big deal. So that's kind of first impressions as you open the box and kind of you know look at things. Hmm. What does Forgotten Waters do well as a game? I think it does well of getting everybody involved and getting it moving quickly. Mm -hmm. Um, Mostly because you only have a certain amount of time to place your characters, um, and you obviously don't want to be any the person holding up everybody. (laughs) That's true. Um, so I think it does that well. I think it does it well on um, giving you a little bit of a character so you feel like you're someone important without being part of the whole group. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it does that well. I think it moves around well or through well. Mm-hmm. Um, it, you're never really sitting and waiting too much. No. So, because it like you know you have everybody's got a job, so you might be doing one or two jobs where you're maybe not doing anything with your character, but you know you're still but doing you have something. To pay attention to what right. another player is doing because that can affect your what you're tracking. Yes, so I think it does that well. It does. Um, honestly, the theme I think is what it does best. I could see that. The story feels very piratey. And very, mm. it's very Pirates of the Caribbean style story of like, right? You know, the dog that gives you the key is a thing, um, right? You know, ro- rolling through a jungle in a cage is a thing, right? And it's over the top and ridiculous mm-hmm. in that in that theme, and that's what they captured, right? Um, I'm not playing a historical pirate game trying to min max my crew and all that Mm -hmm. um we're having some fun tongue tongue in cheek and it keeps the action flowing right i had a crossroads event and it was one of those weird ones of like i stole a giant cannon but there happened to be someone stuck in it having a conversation i was given a choice and then i made a bad choice and it was like oh well that was awkward (laughs) um i don't know what to do now yeah so it's it's fun in that sense, and that's what I think it captures and does very well. Mm-hmm. Um, it does player interactions very well. Yes. And you hit it and do with everybody has a job, even if you're not actively taking current action, you may need to pay attention because the results of that action may affect the board that you're managing, may affect someone else, it may affect what you need to do on your 
turn. Uh, your action, action next. Yeah. Because if someone fails to load the cannon and you're firing cannons. Right. Right. That's something to pay attention to. Yeah, or uh, some of the times, like, somebody did an action and then it negated everybody after that. So, <laughs> you know, sometimes mm -hmm. there's some of that. So you just kind of have to be aware. Right. I'm paying attention, and, and it, it moves fast for that. It does. So. Um, and, and that's what I do appreciate, is the action layout is very quick. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, ready? We're going to page three. Flip. Start assigning. Uh, you're first, you're most infamous. You're second. Go, go, go. Right. Um, and then it's like, okay, who's on action one? All right, and then do action one. Now who's on action two? Do action two. Who's right. on action three? Do action three. All right, end of the round. Hit the end of the round. Entry, find out our little flavor text of what's going on. We're either staying at this page or going to a new page. What what's are we doing? going? Yeah, what's and, going on? And moving on. Yeah. So while it is a long game, mm -hmm. it is constantly moving. There's mm -hmm. no dead time, which is very weird uh, for me because there's a lot of games I've played that are right six, eight hours, and there's dead time in those. Right, you have to wait for somebody else to right. take care of whatever they're doing, and mm -hmm. if they're not ready, that takes longer. And you know, Twilight Imperium is a great example of like mm -hmm. it, fourth edition's better than the older editions, but still, there's a lot of times of like there's six players playing. Mm -hmm. I get to take my one or two actions depending on what upgrades I have, and then I wait until everybody does their thing. And right. depending on what those actions are, that could be thirty minutes to an hour. Right. Because if they're activating, you know, in that right. game, if they're activating a system and doing space combat, that just slows everything down. Right. Where this doesn't do that. No. No, it's a like, quick pace. Worst case scenario. All right, Mindy, roll down and add up your score, and now we have to figure out what happens. Oh, that was one of our story ones, so now... And now we go Now we got, story. like, three minutes of a dialogue that we're listening to because it's narrated. Right. Because there's a lot of stuff that just happened. Right. Exactly. And then all of a sudden we go back, like, okay, who got action for? Wait, what? Right, yeah. So. Well, and yes, there were a few of those times where uh, on the online we somebody started cleaning up and it's like, no, 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 don't do that yet. We're not done. Right. <laughs> you know, like, I get it. We we just took too long for that, but that wasn't really that long. But, but there were still three actions left. <laughs> right. Um, so that's the good stuff. Mm -hmm. what, what are the opportunities? Where, is, where does it fall short? Um, for me, it's a little too long. Mm -hmm. And I just, that's just me. I don't, I don't want to sit. I mean, it, it, it moves, which is good, but it's it just a little too long. And I think had we tried one of the times of just stopping at part mm -hmm. A, but I don't think I'd want to stop at part A. That's the problem. Like, right. I want to finish it. Right. So you want to get finished the second half of that Right. Story. But I don't want to be playing for half the day, you know, so. Yeah. And, um, yeah. And that's where that two to four hour suggested time, I think it's a little bit under, mm -hmm. um, especially when you have four plus players. Right. One, two, three players, I think you can hit uh, that window pretty regularly. Once you get your fourth player, if you guys have played it before, you'll probably hit it at four hours. Mm -hmm. But five, six, seven, I think it's going to be the four hours plus. plus. Even physically. Now, that's oh, the yeah. one thing we haven't tested, to be honest. Well, yeah, but that's true. Just how long actions take and how many things go, or like how mm -hmm. many things you're managing. Just managing that many people and slight distractions here and there will add up over time. Right. Now, granted, um, the one thing I will say, I kind of agree with you on this one. It's a little um, long. It's a little long, and but it doesn't, the benefit to it is it doesn't feel true. like it's dragging on forever. You just look at the time and go, oh my oh. god, it's been four hours. Right. Which is a good thing because you're engaged in the game and you're keeping active. It's a bad thing because if That's all you you're have doing. a short, like... Break time. If people okay. have other engagements, family... Right. Um, and this is like their one game night a week that they can go to, but they got to, they have a hard cut off, cut off at time. 10 p.m. Right. This is not a game you're going to be able to hit that table. Right. This is not a casual filler game. This is something that... This is what we're playing. Right. Let's plan for it. Right. Um, I don't think this is going to be a game that I can hit the table and go, Who wants to play Forgotten Waters? Right. Well, right. with how everybody's excited about it, I probably can. Oh, yeah. But we'll all we're know not. this is the, what we're playing all night. Right. By the way, we're playing this all, all night. night. 
It is. I mean, the one thing is, it does go up to seven players, so yes. you know it's a good size game. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it just it takes a little long. I think that's my biggest thing. Um, it's just that it takes a little longer than I mm-hmm. want it to. I mean, even us playing as two two player, mm-hmm. which you know, trying to follow the rules for a two player game was you got to learn that and stuff. Right. And it took us four hours, and we lost. Having a it probably would have taken us longer. Like I said at the beginning, I think uh-huh. if we had the rules printed out yeah. or in the rule book that we could reference to pretty easily, mm-hmm. I think that would have solved some of our heartache. Right. Um, I think it only went okay enough for us because I did the solo like two days prior. And oh, so you kind of knew. There similar enough yes. rules that I went, oh, this is what they're doing. Here's the twist. You know, right. Here's the twist I know from Solo. Here's the slight variant of that to do it for two players. Right. But, yeah, it does... I know. It's a... It, yeah. If if a long game lasted four hours... I don't think it would be so bad. I think that would be good. Like, if, if it could consistently hit two to three hours, mm-hmm. and four being the... We have a sixth or seventh player. Okay. Mm-hmm. I think that would be the sweet spot. You'd have to play it enough mm-hmm. to do that, and with five option, five games. I mean, yes, the story changes. The there is Actually, whatever I, you're doing we, changes. I and, did the I did the first scenario a couple times just to kind mm-hmm. of run through that. Um, we played as a four player group. I did it solo, right? And I wanted to see how does this narrative play. Like I've already played this scenario, mm-hmm. so I kind of knew what was going on. I kind of knew what to expect, which is fine. It's Mansions of Madness is the same thing. Like, right. However, so Mansions of Madness is a good example of how replayability works in mm-hmm. this one. So with Mansions, what rooms you're going to, who's doing what, kind of plot changes within it. Forgotten Waters doesn't really change the core plot. Right. So like, your objective one, two, three, four How's is going to be the same in, in that scenario every time. However, what you're doing between those objectives right. is what's changing. Yeah. Because you're pulling random exploration tiles As to where from you're point going. A to point B. Yeah. And that's, that's where the replayability comes in. It's not the story that gets changed, change, but what happens between those story points mm-hmm. mixes it up. And there's a lot of variety in oh, yeah. how that happens. You can be sailing and get you know, from point A to point B and have Open sea, nothing bad happened. Great sun, you know, sunbathing on the deck, no big deal. Or you've hit every storm and every pirate ship or uh, uh, royal ship between right. those two points. The next time you do it, yeah, no, I I get that. So so that's where the replayability is. I think mm-hmm. it has it. Mm-hmm. Um, I would like to see more. Wow. Um, and realistically. Um, a very easy expansion to this game would be a scenario expansion where it's like yep. here's three, four more scenarios. Here's the objective card, some new items, um, maybe some new navigation tokens for fun. I was gonna say it's not even gonna be that bad because you've got um, you know and it's all the stories the in the app, app or, the or online. Yeah, yeah, so you know just a few little things here and there, so you don't have to mm-hmm. get a whole new section of the book or anything. If you, right. I mean, maybe you do get a another book at some point right. more pages or something but and you're not flipping from like oh my god i need to right it's not a quickly. fast it's just once you grab a page you drop it down everyone's you gonna go. start taking their actions mm-hmm. so even another scenario or location book right you have two between it's, it's not, not that big no um like so, i said the one other thing i wish they would do is make it printable for the one and two player version yeah. The instructions for that, just to print them out, have them. You know, you're if they've got them on there to print the pirates, you might as well print them too, because I think that would be helpful. Mm-hmm. Um, just a cheat sheet to, because on the on the website it's at the beginning and like you can't really go back once you're you reading. You can, but it's you can, weird. It's hard. It's, it's a not, weird navigation. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, once you're in it, if you're not leaving that web page. You're fine. You're doing right. No issues there. But yeah, if going back to just settings, mm-hmm. um, that's the other nice thing I will say is they do have the settings in there, and if you need to adjust the timer length, it defaults to forty seconds. Right. Um, 
I dialed it up on our higher player count to 60 seconds, and we were still doing it once everyone kind of... Knew after the first were... couple of rounds, everybody kind of getting into the groove of it. Mm -hmm. We were hitting 40 seconds most of the time. Right. But you can adjust that. So depending on your players, you can adjust some things. Right. Um, just like you can adjust some of the volume levels, too. You don't want the ambient, like... Sea, sea noise. Seagulls and sea noise going on. Mm -hmm. Or random cannon fire during a battle. Yeah. You can turn that down, turn it up, whatever. So it, there's some refinement I think that can be done in the web page, and the beautiful thing, the beautiful thing about it is it's the web page, right? So it can easily be done, and everybody who has it benefits it from, right? Um, other than being able to print the one two player variant, which mm -hmm. again the web page could fix that, right? The actual game that you get, I don't have a lot of issues with it. Like all of all of my major complaints can be really adjusted via the website. Yeah. Um, the time length is the only other thing that's like it's a it's longer a, side of things. Right. Yeah, as I say, if we're gonna play, you know, four players, it's gonna be a four-hour game. I figure, you know, that's yeah. not so bad. It's when you get higher that, yeah, that's what you're gonna be doing that whole night or whatever. You start in the early afternoon and, mm -hmm. and, and anticipate that you're gonna play through dinner. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, otherwise, like, everything else in this... It, it's good. Yeah. I was going to say, it's like, good. the one thing I said is I was a little surprised at how small, you know, the cards were for yeah. the treasure and the story, but that's just... I don't know. I like a... You... I like a plain card size, but right. it doesn't need it for this either. I mean, for the most part, we just set them down. It's not like you're holding them in your hand or anything. Right. So they're... It's all kind of open information, right. so it's pretty okay. The only thing is, they are, I mean, I guess, if you have a lot of people, it is kind of small sitting at a table. Yeah. To see I across see the table or something like that. So I could see that, you know. Okay. So. so uh, who would you recommend Forgotten Waters for? Well, for one, for people who don't mind sitting and playing for a while. Mm hmm Um, who like a little bit of kind of tongue-in-cheek laughter kind of play mm -hmm. um not very serious but still fun anybody who loves pirates <laughs> but um and definitely just something a little somebody who wants something different than typical games mm -hmm. that we play or that can be played you know it's got it's got more components to it for more things to do but a good a good moving process too so right. you know you're not you're not somebody that has to um you know who can't do a longer game because it you know you've got your breaks in it or whatever so you want right. you know people people enjoy the constantly moving so okay and for um, you i'd recommend this for players and gamers who want to sit down and have a fun, laugh-filled adventure. Mm -hmm. uh, something that's a little bit lighter, something that's a little in, in, lighter in tone. Right. Not lighter in complexity. Right. It's, it's, it's still in that medium range. I, there's games way heavier than this, but this is oh, definitely yeah. not a gateway game either. No. Um, I would recommend it as something that if you felt Dead of Winter is too depressing and Gen 7 almost too serious because mm -hmm. it has a very like very serious and very moral edge on it. This is the game of like Monty Python pirates. Right. Like it's goofy, it's silly, just run with it. Mm -hmm. And that's who I'd recommend it for. If that's the theme that you're looking for, um, go. This this is good. Um, if you want to make sure everybody at the table is engaged. Mm -hmm. And and those higher player count games, sometimes that's hard to do. This is I would recommend this. Right. Um, on the flip side, who I would not recommend this for is don't. people who don't want to spend their entire evening on one single game. Right. And not even just like, oh, let's replay that. No, one game for right. one run through of one game. game. Yeah. For your entire evening. If 
that's not your thing, don't get this game. Yeah. Um, I definitely wouldn't recommend it to people who can't, um, can't sit still and pay attention, I guess, is a thing. I don't want to necessarily say that's not a good thing either because there's so much going on, but Mm -hmm. I think if they can't concentrate on the one thing that is in front of them, even though there's multiple things going on with that one thing, I think that's where, Mm -hmm. you know, I... I am a person that, you know, likes to just get up and go get a drink and, mm-hmm. you know, I don't, you know, you don't really have that break here. It was always like, hey guys, I got to go to the bathroom, like, watch my stuff, you know, right. move, move, move the, the supplies now, if we the, need it. the benefit to, I'll counteract this a little bit, I think mm-hmm. if we actually play like four player, seven player physically Please. together, yes. that's going to be a little bit easier because you and I would be sitting next to each other and you could just like pass your track, like, hey, come get a drink. Right. And I can go, get me a drink, too. Right. And, like, not really feel as bad about leaving. That's true. Um, virtually, that was a little tougher. Yeah. But we had to manage both, you know, being sheltered. Right. Um, but I see what you mean. Definitely. Right. Like, it's not, a, it's not an invalid point. I'm just, I think it would be a little bit easier physically. Yeah. No, I definitely. Um, vice luck is a thing. Like, if you can't stand not rolling well, you're going to have a hard time with this one, too. Because early on, it's very random on your luck. Because you don't have any car, you don't really have any treasure to it. You don't really have any... You don't have any additional points in your categories to right. add to your roll. So, it's, I'm, I'm rolling a, a 12-sided die. I got 1 through 12 is what I got. <laughs> Maybe with a plus 1. <laughs> right. If I'm lucky. Yeah. And some of these scores um, hit 16, 17, 18, 20 over. Right. If you're okay with the fact with I'm not going to get the best result, Mm -hmm. you're going to be fine. If you need the best result every time, this is going to be a tough one. Right. So. Yeah. And starting off, I mean, it's it's not so bad when you first start because you're all at that point. Right. But definitely once you start getting more up there and, like, all of a sudden you're like, oh, I really need more skills or more certain skills that you don't have before. Mm -hmm. And to go back and get that rolling that's, like, lower than what you're used to. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, the one game, like, it was pretty much just a, I'm going to do this one because I have the highest number in this and we need this. Yeah. You know is one thing, but Mm -hmm. then it's, you know, at least you can work with your your crew. (laughs) So, Mm -hmm. overall, Forgotten Waters, this is definitely a game I'm very happy to have. Mm -hmm. I think um, our game group is going to love it and play it, and they already, you know, we've sampled with some of them, at least virtually, and they loved it. Right. So, I definitely recommend the game. Mm-hmm. With a couple caveats of like, there's a couple things that could be tweaking, and honestly, with the being web based and not app driven, I think that's an easy fix. Right. Um, for the couple things that are sticking with me. Right. So, um, just be aware, it's a time commitment if you're going to play this one. Yeah, and it, it's not bad. I mean, if we but know there are one and done stories, which was one of my complaints on Gen 7, is like... It just had to continuously... You had to go through like seven scenarios uh, to get the whole story, where each scenario in here is very isolated. Mm-hmm. Though, like, the events yes. of the first scenario will be referenced in the others, and likewise. But Either you know it or you don't. It's not... Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. I think our, our friends will like it and that, and yes, I will play it occasionally, but... Mm-hmm. Um, it won't be one of my go-to, but it's, I mean, for what it is, it's good. But I don't think this is going to be a game that you're going to say necessarily, no, I don't want to play that. It's mm-hmm. going to be more of, look at the clock, when are we starting this one? Right. What do, do I, I have, have going on? Can I relax this weekend, or right. is there stuff Do I have going? to wake up early tomorrow to do XYZ, right. or can this be a late night and I'm okay with it? Right. So. Um, so... Big shout out to Plaid Hats mm-hmm. and the wonderful Twitter. Oh yeah, yeah. So definitely check out our the the Tabletop Arcade on Twitter. 
Um, mm -hmm. One of the times we played this, there's an actual card that you get that asks you to tweet them and hail the Lords of Plaid. And within a couple minutes, I got a response, which affected our game. Yes. It, it, I, I was uh, Bob Swole, the pirate, and I got this card and had tweeted them off and asked for their blessing or, or their guidance, and I got some game effects tweeted back to me, and that affected our gameplay for the rest of the game. But in a fun, in a, like a fun, engaging way, though. It right. wasn't like this weird... And what's even funnier is, like, if they didn't tweet me back before we finished the game, right? it would have been like this, uh, the omens don't know what's going on. Like, right. No big deal. But I thought it was just a fun little twist. I, I glad yes. you brought it up. Yeah. But yeah, go to uh, Twitter at Tabletop Arcanum and actually see what happened. Mm -hmm. uh, the game mechanics, uh, Bob the Swole had to be the swole to the land. So I had to take any time of a brawn A brawn, up, yeah. I had to, that I was required to take it. Yes. Because if nobody else, if you were. If able. If able, yeah. So. Which definitely. It, was uh, uh, it, it, it adjusted it, our gameplay a little. Yes, it did. And yeah. I loved it for it. Um. And like I couldn't, uh, I called Ricky, right after that game. I'm like you won't believe what just happened, right? Um, so I love it for that. So definitely, like like I said, check out our Twitter to see that. Mm -hmm. um, we're also on Instagram, Facebook, um, Tabletop Arcanum for all those things, mm -hmm. or Tabletop Arcanum at gmail dot com if you have any want to write in, shout out, question, mm -hmm. concern, complain, whatever. We're here. Um, and that kind of wraps up our, our review of Forgotten Waters. Yes. Next episode, I hinted it at the beginning of this one, uh, is our review of Stargate, the RPG, uh, which is upcoming. It's currently in open beta, so I've been running a test group through it just to see how that's working. So it is not a sort of final product review, but it's definitely if Stargate, the RPG, is this still relevant or... Is it attached to the 5e system? Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Um, we'll find out. And I have nothing to do with this, and I'm only in Season 2 of Stargate. So, yes. You'll be fine. <laughs> so, uh, until next time, this has been Justin. And Mindy. Happy game. Happy gaming. You've been listening to Tabletop Arcanum, hosted by Justin Taylor and Richard Geese, and featuring the original music by Paul Moore and Isaac Gilbert. You can follow us on most social media platforms. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave us a review on whatever platform you listen to podcasts. As always, thanks for listening.